Welcome back everybody. So a lot of us out there may be a little bit embarrassed about our first. You know what I'm talking about. So today I'm gonna to share with you the first rifle that I was ever able to buy about 2007. I think I paid right around 700 bucks. And it was this thing right here, the Bushmaster <laughs> XM15E2S. There are a couple of changes on this rifle, but it is mostly the way that it is when I purchased it. And before you all start laughing, you have to remember, this was just post ban. I think the ban ended in like 2004. So there were a lot of weird things going on and all the cool stuff that we have now just wasn't available. Uh, before we get any further into this thing though, I wanna give a huge shout out to Hidden Hybrid Holsters. They've been a massive supporter of the channel ever since it was much, much smaller. Uh, check them out if you guys are into getting some holsters. I know my 1911 fans out there, you love some of that mix of Kydex and that sweet, sweet leather. They've got a ton of options for you guys to check out. Now getting back to this rifle, you have to remember that ban from the Clintons was from like 1994 to 2004. And once it went away, the market opened up to you being able to have multiple different options on your rifle. So this was one of those things that came out of post ban with what at the time was cool stuff on it that we look at now and you know, we laugh at some of the things going on here. Now, if memory serves right, I wanna say part of that ban was you couldn't have like certain options, like you couldn't have a break, you couldn't have a collapsible butt stock and like a bayonet lug. I think it was like those three options. And if you did, the ATF would come confiscate your stuff. And I know because that happened to a fellow ranger that I was in the military with. He bought a rifle at a store, it had all three of those options and they took that thing away from him um, even though he was still active military, you had to actually be the government itself and then issue it to be able to own it. So it was a crazy time in our history, nothing like what we have now. Um, and thank God it's gone because it did nothing but infringe upon our rights. And now that we've talked about the band, let's talk about the Bushmaster name before we take a good up close look at this thing. So at one point, Bushmaster was a pretty respected name, I guess you could say. Some people will say yes, some people will say no. I will say that this rifle was used as a work setup and it gave me several years of service without malfunctioning or causing problems. But we ultimately know that Bushmaster went out of business, became part of a bankruptcy, and they've come back out now because this is the new Bushmaster rifle that I am currently in the process of reviewing. So I really thought it was time to break this old thing out and figure out what to do with it because she's tired, she's old, she's been run hard, and she needs to be rebuilt. So let's all take that awkward dive back to like 2007, maybe 2008 when I got this thing and have a good laugh at how this thing is equipped and just how rattly loose these things are. All right, so we're gonna take a quick look at this thing, just kind of explain how this thing came and then talk about maybe what's in store for this. So this is, as you can see right there, Bushmaster Mod XM15E2S. So a couple things have been changed. This came with a very basic M4 collapsible stock on a commercial buffer tube, not the best. I did put the Daniel Defense uh, QDN plate on there probably around 2008 or so. Uh, that thing is pretty old. And then it had a standard A2 grip. Uh, this is the second charging handle. I put uh, the big weenie latch on it, was that was called back in the day because we didn't have big extended ambidextrous charging handles. And then the cool thing is, look at that right there, Aimpoint Comp C3 2 MOA. So think about how old that Aimpoint is and it is still going strong. Very, very basic mil spec upper and lower. There is nothing fancy going on here for sure. It came with a Yankee Hill machine rail. It's like eight inches long. So all the space in the world, right? It's a straight quad rail. Um, it's just old. So moving forward from there, remember this is shortly after the assault weapons ban from Clinton. So you'll notice that it's got a bayonet lug on the front because for some odd reason back then it was cool to have a bayonet lug on a front flip up gas block post site. And to finish it off, we've got, move this around, We've got an extra sweet fluted one and nine twist heavy barrel and five, five, six. And I did put this on here. It had a standard A2 and I had this uh, brake laying around for VG6 and put it on there. So you can see that uh, 
This thing is old. It's had a couple things changed out on it, but it is what it is. Um, and this is what, this was considered kind of advanced, I guess you could say for the time, the way that this thing is outfitted because we didn't have the options we have now in like 2007, 2008, when I first was able to buy this thing. This is actually the second charging helm that's been used in here because the other one was destroyed. So you can see this thing has a lot of wear and tear, a lot of rounds on it. This being the second one that is in there with that latch on there because I put that in myself, I remember doing it. This is the original bolt. I did run a chrome bolt in here, I want to say from Young Manufacturing. Uh, but the, what are we missing up here on the gas key? I don't know, maybe some staking? So. Um, although this gun never failed me, we can see that it's it's not the pinnacle of performance or the pinnacle of precise machining, but it did do the job. So what are we gonna do with this thing? Are we gonna stay nostalgic here or am I maybe going to bring this thing into the modern era? So let's talk about that and then let's see if there's anything you would do to this to bring this thing back to life because the barrel is definitely dying. <laughs> It's, it's so bad. I mean, some of the options that are on this thing, like at one point I legit thought it was cool to have that bayonet lug, like I <laughs> just, so overall though, I, it, it performed, right? So I used this at work for a long time and it did well. I've never had problems with it until recently. Um, and it in here is super worn and I need to replace stuff in it. But overall, it was in that time frame before Bushmaster, I guess, really fell apart. They were taken over by some investment firm or some larger company. I happen to have a bag of parts right here at my feet. Uh, right here, uh, right on optic bag from the last shot show that actually happened. Cause I want to rebuild this thing. It's got a little bit of nostalgia to it, but I want to bring it into the modern era. So to do that, we are going to use a Bushmaster MCMR 15 inch handguard on there. We're going to use a blackout defense 16 inch barrel Got a BCM gunfighter hand grip for it. Got just a cheap Arma spec lower parts kit. I have some other stuff that I'll be putting on there, but that's gonna be the basic stuff. Better trigger guard because that nasty stock one on there sucks. Uh, some Midwest Industries combat flip up sights because we're gonna need those since we're getting rid of that sweet, sweet bayonet, bayonet lug gas block sight. Uh, I'm gonna use this blackout defense uh, brake on there because I think I'm gonna take that aim point off there and kind of, I don't know, maybe put a kind of a cheaper magnified optic on there and make it a coyote hunting thing. So I had this old chrome bolt laying around and being that I don't wanna spend a lot of money on this thing because it's sloppy loose, like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. I figured I would use that even though it's been sitting around forever. And then the big splurge on this one is a Geisley single stage SSP trigger. So that was the big splurge, that trigger, and I got it on sale. So those are the plans for the old faithful, the one that did me right for many, many years. I know that we've had a good laugh at my awkwardness and my awkward stage in life where I thought this was a really cool gun and used to brag about it to my friends. Uh, make sure you guys get subscribed. You wanna follow along with this build and kind of see how it turns out, uh, hit it up. If you've ever owned something like this, subscribe, definitely give the video a like, and leave me a comment below on what your first rifle setup was, because I love hearing about people's first setups and how much we all loved those things and thought how sweet, sweet those things were before the modern era of all the crazy cool parts that we have now. And then leave me a comment down below. What do you think I should do with this? Because it's not staying black. Should I rattle can like multi-cam or should I spend that extra little bit and maybe put Cerakote on it and just give it a little bit of love bring that life back into it and have some fun with this thing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and my awkward stage in life that I had with this uh, XM15 Bushmaster right here. Uh, again, make sure you guys get subbed up, get out there on the range, have some fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready even with something that loose. I will see you guys on the next one. That's so bad, <laughs> that's so bad.